So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free GCSE and A level maths videos. So this video is about vectors, vectors as you can find in the C4 A level maths module for Edexcel. Right, so I'm going to try to go through this stuff briefly because all I will be really doing is revising uh, lots of stuff that you should have learned at your GCSE. So I don't want to go into too much depth and a lot of stuff. But uh, I understand that it can be really confusing because sometimes things are explained in a complicated way. Now, very briefly, what is a vector? It's just uh, a certain distance in a certain direction. That's all a vector is. But the way we use vectors in C4 is so simple. Okay, it's just like using your x, y, and z coordinates. Okay, sometimes you just use x and y coordinates. Okay, but typically we often use uh, x, y, z. Okay, so your i direction is like your x direction, your j is like your y axis really, and your k is like your z axis, and that's how simple really it is. Um, so let's go through a bit of notation a to b if i want to get from a to b that is actually a definition of a vector because a vector is a certain direction um a certain distance so you can write a vector like that if you want to um but that just means how to get from a to b and uh, the way you calculate a to b you do the position of b take away the position of a and um you could easily understand that if you imagine maybe in two dimensions we had a position uh, 3, 3 and a position naught naught. and if I did that position 3, 3, take away naught naught, you would get the distance you, or the di uh, vector you need to go from there to there. So, um, but if you did it the wrong way around, if I did A take away B, or if I did uh, 0, 0, take away 3, 3, I'd get minus 3, minus 3, which would be how to get from that position to that position. I hope that makes sense. I'm just going through it very briefly. Anyway, so uh, let's just quickly do that. So if I did B take away A, I would do 10 take away 7, which is 3, 9 take away 8, which is 1, and 11 take away 9, which is 2. Okay, so that would be the vector from A to B. Basically, when I say the vector from A to B, it just means how to get from A to B. Okay, now you can see that I've written one vector like this. This is a vector, the A. So that's actually like a position vector, we call it. How to get to A in the first place. Um, I've written a vector like this, and I've also written a vector like that. They actually mean the same sort of thing. Okay, this is a vector, and this is another vector. Um, but we're just writing in a different way. This one takes a bit more space, doesn't it? Because you have to write I, J, and K each time. Uh, but some people prefer to do that. Some people find find it convenient at other times just to write it like this because this is so short. Anyway, um how do you find the length of A to B? Well, that's simple as well. That's just a bit of Pythagoras, really. Because if I want to get from A to B, that's like saying I want to get one from one position on uh, your coordinate axis to another position. And I want to go 3 uh, in the X direction, uh, 4 in the Z direction, and 12 in the Y direction. As this one says, yeah, 3i plus 12j plus 4k. And that's, that's the X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. Now, if you imagine like a cuboid, I'm sure you've done 3D Pythagoras before, to get from A to B, all you do is 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 12 squared and then square root it and you get the distance. Now, if you've never seen that shortcut for Pyth uh, 3D Pythagoras, uh, let me quickly explain that. 3 squared plus 4 squared gives you that length squared, which is really just 5 squared, okay? Um, and that line squared plus that line squared gives you the hypotenuse of this triangle angle here going across from A to B. Okay, so basically um, that squared plus that squared equals that squared and then you have to square root it to get the actual length of the hypotenuse. So in effect I'm doing 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 12 squared and then square rooting it. You do need to um, try it out. Yeah, try it out. If you, I'm sure you know a bit of Pythagoras. Just try it out and you realize that's how it works. Anyway, um, Oh, no, okay, no example 3, we're just going to split a vector in the ratio 2 to 3, again, you know, GCSE 
that's ratios is GCSE all you're going to do really is split that into five parts and put two parts one way and three parts the other way now if two parts belongs to A to B okay that means to find the vector A to B um, it's just two fifths of the vector A to C because you cut that into five and times it by two to get that part um, so let's do that. Two fifths of A to C. Well, A to C is this. So two f two fifths of five is obviously two. Two fifths of ten is obviously four. You divide that by five and times by two, you get four. Divide that by five, you get four. Times it by two, you get eight. And so that's the um, vector A to B. If A to B is two fifths of A to C, yeah. Okay. Now to write the vector equation of a line again, that's not too difficult. Um, basically, uh, the the vector equation of a line actually just gets you anywhere along a line, just like the equation of a line when you do y equals m x plus c. That gets you anywhere along a line. Okay. So if you want to get anywhere along a specific line, i.e., go along anywhere in a specific direction, all you have to do in vector form is say, I'm going to start from here, it doesn't have in um, when you talk about y equals m x plus c, i.e. The, uh, the equation of a straight line, you talk about starting from the y axis. But in the vector form, you don't have to bother with that. You can start any position. Okay, you can give any position for your starting position, which is called your position vector, which looks a bit like this. Okay, and then you say, I want to go in a certain direction, and you can go a certain amount in a certain direction. So this is your direction you want to go in, okay, and you can go as many times as you want in that direction, starting from that position. So basically, you start from a position, you go in a certain direction as many times as you want, you can go backwards, you can go forwards, and effectively that gets you anywhere along this line. So a typical vector equation of a line is looks like this, where you've got your position vector here in 3D, uh, plus lambda times your direction vector. This is the direction you want to go and how much you want to go in that direction, that direction that direction. And lambda and mu are the most common letters we use to describe how far you want to go in that direction. Lambda and mu just have to be any number you feel like. So if that was 2, okay, that would get me... I, I would start from i plus j plus k and then I'd say I want to go two times this, this vector. So basically it, the where I'd end up would be i plus j plus k plus 2 times 2i plus 2 times 3j plus 2 times 4k which basically means, let's work this out, 2 times that is 4i plus 1i from before gives me 5i's all together um, 1j plus 6j's, because that's 2 times, we're pretending lambda is 2, gives 6j's plus 1 is 7j's, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. So the position I get to along this line, if lambda was 2, would be 5i plus 7j plus 9k. That is a position along the vector, just to get you a feel of how all of these things work. Um, what else have we got? I'm just going to talk about this half, you know, I think I'm going to run out of time in a minute. So I'm just going to talk about this half, although I don't think it's all that complicated. I don't want to rush it so quickly that I don't talk about everything properly. So I'll talk about this second half in a bit, uh, in the second video. Anyway, so... Um, what are we doing? Yeah, we're going to talk about equations of lines that are parallel. How can you make equations of lines that are parallel in vector form? Um, so we've already just talked about a vector equation of a straight line. Um, if you have uh, two straight lines which have the same direction, they're going to be parallel, right? So all you need to have vector equations of lines that are parallel is just different starting points. Because if you start from here and go in that direction, and then draw another line going, starting from there and going in that direction, they're just going to be parallel lines. So basically, uh, parallel lines in vector form have the same direction vector, okay um but just different starting points so you might have so basically this is equivalent to this thing here okay and these this bit a to b is equivalent to your direction vector and you go lambda in that lambda times in that direction or mu times in that direction it's up to you yeah basically these these two lines are 
parallel lines or parallel uh, vector equations of lines. Does that make sense? I think it does. And uh, let's finish off with this thing here when we're finally using the equations of lines. Um, this is a typical vector equation of a line. It looks like this. It's a starting point plus lambda times your direction vector. So how many how far you want to go in a certain direction starting from that position. And we are told, it's a tip very typical question, uh, that this is a position on this line. Well, to work out what A and B is, you're given a clue that you, part of the uh, position on this line is zero. So the I element of um, this uh, vector equation of the line is zero. And that can help you work out A and B very easily because if you want to find any point on this line, you can write it like this. Because this is any point on this line. It's 1 plus lambda times uh, uh, one i, so because this is the i's, these are the j's, and this is the k's, as I explained earlier on over there. Okay, so the number of uh, how far I go in the i direction is one plus lambda times one. Okay, which is just lambda. Lambda times one is lambda, isn't it? So one plus lambda is how far I go in the i direction, and two plus five lambda is how far I go in the j direction, and three plus six lambda is how far I go in the k direction. Okay, so. So if I know that um, if I go 1 plus lambda, lambda could be any number, okay, um, if I go 1 plus lambda distance in the i direction and it's equal to 0, that means that can fix the value of lambda uh, or tell me how, what lambda is in this case, so how far along, uh, along this line I've gone. Okay, so if 1 plus lambda equals 0, Okay, then that means lambda is minus 1. So that basically tells me what lambda is and how far along this line I've gone, basically. So if lambda is minus 1, that's how, that's how I can find out the positions of A and B, because I, now that I know lambda is minus 1, to get to this point, okay, that can help me get work out what A and B is, because all I do is 2 plus minus 1 times 5, because lambda is minus 1, so 2 minus 5 basically um, gives you minus 3 and uh, uh, 3 plus minus 6, because minus 1 times mi uh, 6 is minus 6, so 3 minus 6 is uh, also minus 3 so basically A is minus 3 and B is minus 3 and that's it really that is the... oh I haven't really given the answer, I was basically have yeah, so the position of this is th 0 minus 3 minus 3 and that's it